Hello and welcome to another Raggy's Beers, Wines and Spirits review on an early Sunday morning. Now you might be thinking, what the hell are you doing drinking beer on a Sunday morning? Well, I'm doing alcohol free, so I can get away with that. So this fellow here, it's from Brutal Brewing and it's a ship full of IPA, an alcohol free beer. Uh, from what the internet's saying, it's from Sweden. Yes, it is from Sweden. In fact, I've... On my website, my server admin, he's from Sweden. And the funny thing is, he does whiskey reviews. Um, so he said. And uh, he also does gardening in the months of the year that you can over there. Which is dead weird having a mate in Sweden who does gardening, you know. But uh, let's pour this baby out and see how it cooks. Sweden, home to um, well, a, lot, a lot, lot of blonde ladies, obviously. And I suppose blonde gentlemen as well. Uh, not that, not that I partake in that, but um, also some good theme parks as well. So it says here, a ship full of IPA alcohol free is your dry drinking version of the best selling ale in Sweden. So, and you get flavour to match the 5.8% ABV version without a drop of alcohol, thanks to the brilliant folk at Brutal Brewing. So fair play to them. We'll see ourselves. So, good lacing and carbonation in it. Um, in this light, I do say in this light, I would do it outside, but it's, it's tiddling down. Uh, we actually are getting some rain at last. Everywhere else has had thunderstorms all week. We've had nothing. And then all of a sudden we've had some bit of rain overnight. Yeah, amber pore, white head, big fluffy white head. take my hands away from the glass because what, what it is I've just been we've got an allergen oven in the kitchen so it's like, it looks like a big fish bowl and uh, with an allergen ring at the top brilliant for cooking sausages, burgers chops, steak chicken products you know it's bang on much better than using the oven but every now and again it needs a clean out and oh so let me smell it without my hands anywhere near the glass So a subtle hoppy aroma um, emanating from it. <sighs> Notice the posh words. It does smell like a beer really, in other words. Ah, bottoms up. Or maybe not. Okay. First impressions rather good. Um, like the, I would say, the Brew Dogs, and uh, I'm trying to think of the other brands. Oh, there's been a few good brands that have brought out alcohol free, and then there's been a few that um, taste like tea. Too heavy on the malts without adding hops in. That's the, there's a balance, isn't there? You know, if you're going to do it, if you're going to have alcohol free, it's what it's got to taste like the original product as best as you can. But some go heavy on, on the malt and that makes it taste like tea and it's not pleasant, I don't think. Unless you like tea. For me, more of a traditional uh, IPA rather than a, a fully fledged craft IPA. Um, I get the hops and I also get the malt. The malt is just right right. Like I said, it's not too heavy malty. Uh, I'm not slagging off any com companies in this country, but there are a few that I've done and uh, they've not been that great, honestly. And uh, it's all about getting that to perfection, that amount that you've got in. Now, I know the old me is starting to come back better because I've woke up this morning, wife's got up. And I'm in bed, I thought, oh, I can't lay in fucking bed, I need to get up. So I've got up, I had 20 minutes longer than she did, got up. And straight away, washing's on. I've cleaned the dishwasher out, because every now and again the dishwasher needs to clean out properly. Uh, that's on now, so that's, I can fill the dishwasher if I do that. Um, I'm cleaning the JML out, I've got that soaking now, then I'm going to rub it down with the old um, Brillo pad thing, get, get them metal bars pristine again. And I'm proper on it, that's why I've come down the shed to do a quick bear review. And then get back to get back to the workload. And uh, yeah, 
Again, I had a little bit too much last night. A drop of flipping spiced rum and uh, I'm fucking dead. I'm dead to myself. It get, get late and I think, ah, oh, sod it. What I need to do is leave it till a bit later so the wife don't see me doing it and then get a bollock again, get moaned out for falling asleep early. Although, to be fair, you know, the last few months, we've all had, we've all of us, and if you haven't, fair play, you've done well, but we've all gone through some terrible anxiety, worried about older family members, younger family members, members with uh, vulnerabilities, all of us around the world. And, uh, you know, if you haven't drank more than you should have done in the last few, five or six months, I'd be surprised. I mean, if you don't drink anyway, but we all need we all need some sort of release to cope with the pressures that are out there. So it's understandable if people do drink more in these very, very strange and troubled times. You know. And there should be no judging either because you know, that's it it happens. It's as simple as that. That is a nice pint. Um, you don't really notice that overly, I mean, let's be fair, you're going to notice it, there's no alcohol in it, but it's one of them that's so damn close to being bang on that um, you don't really notice the fact that there's no alcohol there. The taste is good. So they've won. The aroma's okay. The taste is very good. And getting away with drinking a beer on a Sunday morning. What's that about, eh? Ooh. I've had a coffee already, mind you. But I bought, at one stage, I bought that many alcohol free and low alcohol at 0.05, which is basically alcohol free beers, that I need to get them out of the way, get all the backlog out of the way, and then just return to normality as it was. And it's funny, we've gone from being in a, a very much a summer situation to today. It feels very much like autumn today. And obviously, August, thankfully, is still classed as summer. And, uh, I mean, it, let's be fair, these days it's nice, right up until the end of October. And uh, when... Uh, with regards to my uh, hot tub gazebo out there, the wife says to me this morning, says, why don't you build, we're going to, the hot tub itself, the gazebo of it, is 3 by 3 metres, it's too big anyway, don't need it that big. And to save money on materials, I'm going to do it slightly smaller, plus also to get some of my garden back, because at the moment I'm losing valuable garden space. And for a gardener, you know, so I'm, I'm going to build... But I've, for the base, for the for the hot tub to sit on the base, I'm going to build it probably Thursday or Friday this week because I may be off work. I finished this job on Wednesday. <sighs> I don't need to say any words. I finished this job on Wednesday and on Thursday and Friday I either start my new job or I start my new job on Monday. You might say to me, look, start on the Monday. Get yourself four days off. Get yourself... You know, enjoy four days. He might say that because he comes across as a very nice person. Obviously, you know, there's always that chance that people are nice and then they get you into the job and they're not. You know, there's always that chance. But I think my uh, personality will and my hard work will win through and the love of gardening as well will win through. Hey-ho, we'll find out sooner or later, or sooner. But uh, yeah, so I may be building, I may build the base, the 2.5 metres uh, by 2.5 metre base this week, get it in there, obviously empty the octo out, get it in there and just see, because uh, the level in there is shit, for want of a better word, and uh, I'm going to get it in there, get the level perfect, put wedges underneath, build the frame and put bath of bricks or something to just get the, get the level bang on, uh, temporarily at least. Put the hot tub on, fill it up, and just see if the hot tub can, if the if the frame that I'm building, so it's a good way of actually testing it, can test the weight. Because you imagine, 600 gallons or whatever it is, I don't know how many gallons it is to be honest. 
but it's a six it's a six person hot tub a lazy spa vegas i think it is and obviously that's holds a lot of water so if, if i can build a frame uh, i've i've got some i bought some good wood to build it 3b2s 4b2s and that build that frame get it bang on and just see if it holds it and holds it good you know one will know sooner or later rather later than sooner though we don't want to be uh, going through a wooden frame but I have no fear there'll be that many cross beams in there that it'll be that solid built together that hopefully one I'll be able to lift it and uh, get it into place, get it level, and just see, you know, see from there, see. As long as it's nearly, nearly level in there, but before I do the permanent structure, which will be over the winter months, you know. So, uh, in the weekends, in the winter, when you're not really doing out. Um, I want to rejuvenate my fence panels along the back. I've got six by six foot fence panels along the back. I put them, because we've got shitty neighbours at the back. And uh, I want to rejuvenate them. Probably paint if I get you know if I could get hold of oil, old engine oil, I'd buy the new fence panels, paint the fuck as an engine oil, so that the engine oil never rots off, never dries. And so that they they, they lubricated. From day one they are lubricated and that's it. And have no worries. So there's a the thing for you. If ever you come across a garage that's got shiploads of engine oil and you've got fence panels Say that back on somebody's garden or back on somewhere that you don't you don't really want to be taking in fence panels out. Engine oil. <laughs> Dirty job, smelly job. You won't like doing it. But you do it, ten years down the line, you're gonna to have to do it again. And yeah, your fence panels will probably stay decent for a lot longer. Obviously you won't do it on your you won't want to do it on your front garden or around your entertainment area, but at the back of the garden where you're not worried, jobs are good and And what a great way to use en um, great way to use engine oil, you know, not to chuck it down drains or whatever they do with it. So, what a little belter of a, a beer. Um, amber pore, whitehead, subtle hoppy nose, hoppy and malt throughout, and a great drink. Gotta say, for an alcohol free beer, it tastes just as good as most alcohol, uh, alcohol beers. And it matches, like it says on here, it matches the 5.8% version, which I've, one day I've got to try. Uh, I don't know if I can get hold of it, but I'll tr I want to. Uh, I haven't got a clue where I got this from. And as I guess, it was either from a supermarket or I got it from lowcostbeer.com. Um, can't be positive of where I bought it. May well be Tesco's. No, I have no idea to be honest. Let me just do a quick scoop on here, see if it's um see if it comes up anywhere with an English shop. Yeah, it's not coming out. It's got some good ratings though. So that tells you something, doesn't it? Even the ad, ad even the aggregate sites are rating it good. So um so yeah. Really nice. Uh, hit the spot, lovely. Um, <laughs> no negativity about it. A, a properly done alcohol-free beer. And let's be fair, if you want to drink alcohol, if you want something that tastes like bloody beer and smells like beer, otherwise you might as well just drink cola. Out of five, then. And cola's just as expensive as these alcohol-free beers anyway. Out of five, for me, 4.6 out of five. Absolute stunner of a beer. Well, that was bloody twang at the end. Whoa. Well done, Brutal Brewing. Well impressed. And I've got some Instagramming to do again later. I do love Instagramming, yeah. I love it to bits. And I've got a load of bottles of um, Rhubarb Stout to bottle up. They're all washed out in the kitchen, all sterilised, washed out. I've got to rinse them, come down here and do that lovely task of filling the bottles with the... I've got to put sugar in first in the house. And depending on how big the bottle is, I've got, to, I've got a mixture of two litres, one and a half, 1.25 and one litre bottles. So two spoons of sugar in a one litre bottle and adjusted accordingly. Basically, per pint, one spoon. 
and uh, leave them for a couple of weeks and see how they secondary ferment and I'll do a, a catch up review on that. The same with the others. I, I might do a round I might do a, a home brew um, catch up with some of the home brews that I've got just to see how they've done, you know. Um, it mixes it up a bit because a lot of people do like the homebrew side of things. I mean, there's only so much homebrew I can do. Um, the funny thing is, I'd even brew for my mates if they come to me and says, "Can you brew for me?" And I say, "Yeah, I'll do the brewing as long as I get a pint, you know, for um, research purposes, or even two pints. One, for, one for at, at the bottling stage or the barreling stage, and one at the um, the matured stage because that's that's where the interesting bit both lies." Right, took way more, too much of your time again, and I've got to get back to my menial task, yeah, and uh, impress the wife when she comes home. Not really, I'm doing it for impressing myself, because I'm sick of the bloody JML looking scruffy, and it's a job that nobody else does bar me, because it's it's manky, and it's, uh, once it's clean, it looks spot on, but uh, when, because all the fat drops down, as you can imagine, and it all sits in the bottom, so after so long, it needs a clean. Ah. <sighs> Pitfalls of life, eh? We've all got them jobs we hate doing. Now I've got a sunny flow upstairs. Um, it's too expensive to dig round and all that. And I've got my decking there now. If I'd done it before, if I'd done it before the decking went down, I might have done it. But uh, groundwork, I, I no, it's not my thing. You know, you need a proper plumber, you know, proper plumbers and for that sort of shit. But I put a sunny flow upstairs, and oh, I've had it where somebody's. You know, these wipes that you get, not toilet rolls, but wipes. Someone chucked them down, jammed the fucking blade up, didn't it? Brought me ceiling down in the front room last year. It was about August last year when that happened. So I moved job, moved jobs. I had rats under the ass. I had issues at work in the new job. And then, a fucking ceiling come down. Uh, all, in, all in the space of a month. Talk about stressful. And that's because somebody shoved uh, what basically... And it was... It was like a perfect storm because usually when it jams, it stops flooding in, but it didn't stop flooding in. So then it's going up, and that's what caused the roof to go. And you have to get your hand down and get your hand in, and it's it's disgusting. You have to undo the toilet, put your hand into the thing, pull out the whatever's blocking it, and then put it all back together and mop up. It's disgusting. I don't know how these plumbers go on when there's turds and that floating in toilets. I mean, I've seen it in public toilets where you know someone's shoved the fucking wallet down the toilet and then shite it all over the toilet oh fucking disgusting set me up to clean the Arboretum toilets once and I went and I looked at that I thought fuck that somebody else can do that tomorrow so clean did the other toilets like you know loads of bleach chucky fucking bleach you know you bastard stuff like that and uh, I mean I was only 18 20 at the time you know I didn't you know you're in that stage where you don't give a shit anyway well somebody did and uh, yeah, it was disgusting. Same with the women's toilets, they were fucking disgusting as well. I think them toilets have gone now, they needed to go, they were grim. And grim isn't the nice word, they were, they were ugh. And more shagging going off in them toilets than in most people's bedrooms. Disgusting. Ugh. Some things I don't miss from the old days. And that's it, thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for listening to Raggy's Tales of Old. God, I could see some 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 tales from the my old days at the Arboretum and that. Because on the public part, you see a lot of things. I mean, there's a lot of things I forgot. I've got mates who work with me who could tell who could remember a lot more. Who used to work with me, who could tell remember a lot more of some of the stuff that went down over the years. Oh, we had some good laughs, and that's what it's about: laughing, you know. Letting stress and anxiety beat you, it's not the way. Coming out of it laughing, putting the world to rights. And uh, I've got to start saving some money up. Uh, I've got a beer to buy, expensive beer to buy. Anyway, see you soon. Cheers.